being a potential disaster or not. I don't know. Okay, so this is the inverse of it. Is it tracing it out? So, well, because it's, it, if you don't smooth, like it kind of snaps to a, it snaps to the vert, vertices. This, okay. What is this? What is this? This is crazy. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> this has to go on YouTube. All right. So that's, I mean, it's going to continue down there and all the way over here, I suppose. Okay, so you could obviously continue drawing it forever and look, it's going to go vertically there, right? This is the, in, this is the inverse of this sine graph, okay? This is sine x. What do you call this red one? You s it's not sine inverse of x. It's a, it's x is sine y. Oh. The the black one is y is the sine of x. It's y is a function of x, right? In that case, when it goes horizontally there, this is y equals sine x. The vertical one is x equals sine of y. It's written the other way around. It's x as a function of y. I think a lot of you learned this in grade 12 but didn't realize it meant looking at the function the other way around. You know, you know how you can have a, de a dependent and an independent variable? Like if you drill down into the earth, the temperature rises. So you could have, you could have D for depth and T for temperature. Which one is independent? Which one's dependent there, would you say? The depth is independent. So you could say the temperature is a function of the depth, right? The deeper you go, the hotter it gets. It, you could look at it the other way, even though in this case it wouldn't make sense to, but you can, you can always switch things around and say, now I'm going to look at temperature as a, as a function of, sorry, depth as a function of temperature. This is looking at X as a function of Y. This would be if you picked, this would be if you picked a Y value and then looked at what its x value was. This is not a, this, you can't look at this as y as a function of x. You can look at it as x as a function of y. That same thing is going to be true. The same relationship we showed before that if you have a point, now I, I can't draw a point on here, but the slope of this curve and the slope of this curve are reciprocals of each other at corresponding points. If you want to write this as the sine inverse function, I, I think it, I don't know if it'll let me input, actually it will if I write it correctly. If I write sine with the little negative one, it's not going to be the right thing, but I think if I put in the way they would call it in a university course is arc sine x. Arc sine is inverse sine. Arc sine means inverse sine. It's actually better because the negative one causes people all kinds of problems. Did you see what happened there? Do you want to see it again? Where did it show up there? It's just this part of it. Okay, that's what it draws on your calculator, just that part of it. Okay, um, if I, uh, I would have to start again to erase that tracing stuff, I think. This part of it is the restriction, like it's a restricted part of it between there and there so that it is a function. If you write y equals sine inverse of x, you're saying it's a function of x. Y is a function of x. That's the inverse sine function, okay? If you kept going, as soon as you turn the corner, it's not a function anymore. So when you write, uh, if I have it down below here, when you write sine inverse of x, it looks like just that chunk of the graph that's like this, right? It's just a chunk of the graph like this. It's the reflection of it. This is 1, this is negative 1. This value here is pi over 2. This value here is negative pi over 2. Because when you reflect it, of course, the those points, are the value switch, right? Regular sine functions and other trig functions have the, the pi numbers on the x-axis and the regular numbers on the y-axis. All the numbers on, are on both axes, of course. It's just that when you label your scale, you label these. 
when you do the inverse, it gets reflected. So those points are there. If you if you want to think about it, you know this curve says that if you pick uh, pi over six here or thirty degrees, and you look at what the value is here, the sine is one half. Here it would be if you picked one half here, it would be working backwards and say, well the angle is pi over six. When you on your calculator, go to your calculator here. There isn't. Okay. Good morning, here we are at Friday.